Washington is the favorite in the Pac-12 after their big win over Oregon. But when you're talking about teams that can get to Las Vegas this year, do not sleep on two programs that, you know, mirror each other. You are Locked On Pac-12, your daily podcast on the Pac-12 Conference. It's the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Locked On Pack 12. I'm your host, Spencer McLaughlin. Thank you so much for making this your first listen or your first view of the day. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day, and your number one source to stay up to date with our media rights and soon to be mostly team free. But until then, beloved and loaded conference of champions, like, comment, subscribe, rate, review, please, and thank you wherever you listen to or watch this show, which today is brought to you by Prize Picks, the number one daily fantasy sports platform in North America. Go to prizepicks.com slash college. Use code LockedOnCollege for a first deposit match up to $100. Roman Tomashoff is here with me today, host of, or co-host rather, of Locked On Huskies, covers the dogs for Fan Nation at Sports Illustrated. We are going to get to his Huskies big win uh, a little bit later in the show over my ducks, but I wanted to start today, Roman, with Oregon State and Utah because these two programs are built in the same exact image. Jonathan Smith, Kyle Whittingham. They're not making flashy quotes. They're not recruiting at a high level. Their quarterbacks are under center a lot. They want to run the football. They want to play good defense. They want to get good enough production out of their offense. These are both good football teams that we both expected to be contenders to get to Las Vegas on December 1st coming into the year. Washington's got all the headlines. Oregon still looks very good. They're inside the AP top 10, as they should be, in my view, after that thrilling game on Saturday. But here are Utah and Oregon State with one conference loss apiece, quality wins on their resume. How much better does that Utah win over Florida look, by the way? The Gators are 5-2 and two right now. Oregon State, I think especially, because I have questions about Utah's offense without Cam Rising, whether or not he comes back, I, I think this is a team that we have to be able to look at and say, you just can't forget about these guys, especially with the schedule the Bees have going forward. Oh, absolutely. And I remember coming on here to talk about them in the preseason. That was one thing that we both said. And it's it's just it's always really, really vindicating. And I know we'll get to this later in the show. We're indicating when rankings that we have are are, are just proven to be to be right. <laughs> just just a little teaser there for everybody. Uh, but no, it's absolutely that they, they have a, an, a tremendous offensive line. I love watching David David Martinez from the football. They have a solid defense, and it, I mean, really, what more could you ask for, right? And it's something that we know is going to happen in the Pac-12, where the conference losses are going to come because this is just as our beloved conference of champions uh, is in, in its final season. R.I.P. Um, it's, it's just something that we know is going to happen, so there's no better way for it, it to go out than with a whole lot of those just coming in in, in force. But with Oregon State and with Utah, it, it, it's just that, Spencer. It's exactly what you said, where they, they're they in the same image and they both just are so well coached. It's something that we always need to talk about with both these schools, that they will always be well coached and they need to be just discussed in every single conversation because I know I've seen a lot of, Oh man, I really hope there's a Washington, Oregon rematch in the, uh, in the Pac-12 championship game, which would be fantastic. I think that would be a great game, but as somebody who like looks at Washington in the driver's seat right now for the Pac-12 championship game, um, it would be really great to see one of these, these other teams in there too, because that would just be a really fun, really interesting matchup for, and even if, you know, uh, somebody else is there, whether it's USC, whether it's Oregon against maybe hopefully one of these two schools where you can see just like, oh, wow, great offense versus a great defense. It's just they just play fun football every every week that you really want to tune into. Yeah. And I, I wanted to bring up Oregon State and, and Utah today on the show because I think the narrative outside of the Pac-12, broadly speaking, is the same as it is for the Big 12. Like as Pac-12 fans, who do you and I want to watch in the Big 12 title game? Well, it's, it's, it's Texas and Oklahoma because right. they're the two best teams over there and they keep playing these amazing games. I, I mean, Red River delivers aside from 2022, which in which Dylan Gabriel didn't play, by the way, it delivers time and time and time again. And, and that's what everyone loves seeing. That's why we love the sport, right? It is the opportunity yeah. to, to watch these great games play out. And Oregon, Washington is a great rivalry as well. And the way this first game went and the way last year's game went, like, Everybody is looking at it and saying, well, you know, that's just, it feels destined for that. 
And I, I think that is 100% a possibility. I feel really good about where Oregon's at. Their schedule, they've got four of their final six games at home. They do still have to play USC. They do still have to play Oregon State. But Utah without Cam Rising doesn't quite uh, scare me as much. But let's get to the Utes, who in, you know, again, we have a lot of annual traditions that are going away in the Pac-12. Rivalries, cannibalization, Utah being underrated. These are just staples in the conference every single season. And when I look at what Utah is doing right now, they had a really nice win against Cal at home on Saturday in which their defense again played well. The offense was able to do enough, finding success on the ground. And, and I just feel like if Cam Rising comes back, Roman, and is just 80% of what he was a season ago even, that defense, it, and, and Kyle Whittingham is such a great coach and a great game manager and everything like that. If Rising is back, I put the Utes squarely in the mix to go and play in Las Vegas this year. They could beat Oregon. They could beat Washington too. I do really think they're that good if and only if Cam Rising is there. Absolutely. And first of all, I, I really just was hoping you were just going to use the word cannibalism just because you could. I thought that would have been really great. I mean, it, it, it's, 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 it's what we do here. This is what we do on the, in, in the Pac-12 conference. I mean, it's true. last year is the best example. Utah, no hope of getting to the playoff. USC did. Well, of course, Utah is going to beat them twice. Like, that's just oh, absolutely. That's the way things had to be. Speaking of which, that's going to be a matchup that I'm really looking for. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Game of the week. For, Game of the week for, in the Pac-12. For a plethora of reasons. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but no, and it's I. You're you're right. Cam Rising is just the key, as as he has been for the last couple of years, right? Where we always know, just like in the same vein of Oregon State, what Utah is going to do, and that's just kind of the one thing holding them back. And where my my question is, and when when we get to the rankings, I I know we'll have further discussion about this, but that's where my one question is about Utah. When Cam Rising comes back, if Cam Rising comes back, what's that going to look like? What what happens there? So until until we get to that point, I'm always going to have questions and why I might kind of have them just a little a little bit of a step like just kind of a, a like a 1A, 1B with Oregon State where I would give the the team that has a, let's let, let's just say the, uh, the less questions at quarterback right now, mm -hmm. um, the, the slight edge where I love what Utah does. I really do but I can't just kind of consider them in that same vein because we know what they can do, especially against USC. And we'll see what happens this weekend. We know what they can do just against some of these high powered offenses. So my question is, can they, can they keep up if, you know, they, they end up allowing 28, 35 points against an Oregon, a Washington or a USC. Right. I, I agree. And cam has to be there for that to happen. Yes. I, I don't think Bryson Barnes is capable of playing at the same level against any defense, even ones like USC that, you know, a Michael Penix can or a Bo Nix can or a Caleb Williams can or a Noah Fafita can. I'm not sleeping on Noah Fafita down there in Tucson. That, right. that, that dude, I'm talking about him on tomorrow's show because he deserves his own segment. That dude is balling right that now dude, for right. Uh, the for the Arizona Wildcats. He can really, really play, and they were, they were impressive. And by the way, it starts right now for Utah in this big question about Cam Rising. If he is not back this week, I don't think they have a shot – to be a USC team that is ticked off after they played poorly last week. Caleb Williams especially is not going to have a bad game two weeks in a row. I know Utah's defense is good, but the game is in Los Angeles. Like Everything about that game screams USC to me if Cam Rising is not there. But if Cam Rising is there, and then we just... We just we, we really, really don't know, but it is going to start now because it looks like a two-loss team. Uh, maybe they won't get into the conference championship game, depending on what happens with Washington. We'll talk about more fallout from uh, that game. And I, I think when you look at you know what Utah does really well, it can counter what USC doesn't do well. They're built like Notre Dame in a lot of ways. If Utah had been out and about scouring job boards looking for quality candidates, if that's how you brought in talent, they would have been using LinkedIn jobs because they've got the right guys for their system every single year. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. You want to be 100% certain, certain you have access to the best qualified candidates available, and that is why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps find the right people for your team faster and for free. Small businesses rate LinkedIn Jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked 
on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free terms and conditions do apply. All right, we we roll along post second segments up here with uh, Roman Tomashoff of Locked On Huskies, and let's get to the fallout from a, another just absolute classic between uh, two Ooh. bitter rivals. Uh, many people out there know I was not particularly thrilled with uh, the outcome. I knew that was a possibility uh, that Oregon could go in and lose that game. I thought going into it that it had Red River vibes, that it was a coin flip game and would come down to a couple plays. And I think literally all of that played out across the board, Roman. And the reaction up in Washington has, of course, been well-received, understandably so. The Huskies are number five in the AP rankings. They are the Pac-12 favorites right now and have an inside track, not just to the playoff, but to the Pac-12 championship game as well. I should probably say those things in uh, reverse order, but it's neither here nor there. What are you feeling about the Huskies right now after that game against Oregon in which it could have gone either way. And once yep. again, it went Washington's way and they're undefeated. Well, first of all, the first thing I have to do is I have to pull up my bow and arrow here <laughs> because on our Friday crossover show of lockdown Huskies and lockdown ducks, you had me make a prediction, which is something I, I, I rarely ever do because I'm a huge jinx. And I said, Washington by three. So I'm just going to say just, yeah, that one, that, that was great, but no, that was just truly as impressive of a win for Washington, as you can say, where uh, we had Oregon fans in our comments over on lockdown Huskies all week saying, Oh, you're knocking Oregon, but Washington hasn't played anybody, even though they played an Arizona team. That I know we both really like, um, and it was just kind of, yeah, now that whole argument is dead. Now you don't have to worry about that. There are still questions. There's still a big question about the defense, but one thing that uh, Lars Hansen and I discussed on lockdown Huskies is the defense has done what they've always done, which is just enough. They make a play when they needed to. I'm not sure if you saw um, Josh Connerly Jr.'s uh, PFF pass blocking grade from... Uh, I did not. Uh, your, it was Spencer, it was 13.2. That's not great. Jo uh, Josh Connerly, I think he's a really talented prospect, but Braylon Trice just creates havoc in the backfield. And that's something that has well, been Well, but it didn't question. result in that, much, in that much pressure on Bo Nix overall. Well, so that's that's what I was going to get to is they still need to figure out a way to a way to record sacks and a way to bring the quarterback down, but they're finding the opportunities that they need to. The the opportunities are there, so it's just a matter of putting it all together. And can they do it? That remains to be seen. They've gotten some turnovers. They've been good with that, but they're they're. The, the pieces are there is what I'd say with the defense. And then with the offense, there are a couple of injury questions like Jalen McMillan. We'll see how long he's out. Uh, German Bernard, same thing there, but it was really nice to have Giles Jackson back, which was a total stunner, by the way. Let me just say this as a member of the Washington media, uh, there were, there were, I was having this discussion with multiple people. And we were just like, wait, what? This is this is happening. Like we he's had, just like he's just there. That's what Utah fans want to have with Cam Rising this week. Yeah, like, wait, just, Cam's playing? Woohoo! Just an Undertaker <laughs> moment. It was yeah. great. It was, but yeah, no, there's the the vibes are high. There's still a lot of work to do. Cam, uh, just excuse me, Kalen DeBoer was all business this morning at his at his press conference. When it was just kind of yep, back to work, you know, on to the next. And because Arizona State has beaten these Huskies the last two years, they were this team's last loss a year ago in Tempe. So it's not it's it's not an easy game, despite what the uh, the spread might tell you. So I think that that's something that I think it's a pretty easy game. Hey, hey, you you can say that. I can't. <laughs> yeah, I, um, I, I, I said in my Monday show, like you know, going over Washington schedule and Oregon State schedule and whatnot. I was like, and they have Arizona State this week. That's not happening again. Yeah, that's not, um, that's not happening again. I mean, I mean, I know Trenton Borgay is the last guy to beat the Huskies, but that was that was at home. This is on the yeah. That's not. Um, that, that, that's not happening there. Uh, one more thing I want to ask you about Washington before we get to uh, our power rankings here in in week seven is Washington for the second straight year against Oregon was able to get it done. And, and the defense, as you said, did enough, right? They came up clutch in a couple of, of key spots. Here's, here's what I would worry about if I were a Washington fan. Obviously, I am not. For the second straight year, look, Bucky Irving is... Is a, is a dude. He is a he is a very strong, hard to tackle dude. Absolutely. But for the second straight year, it looks like Washington secondary is not exactly fantastic in the tackling department. And you know, Oregon has given them given them trouble the last couple of seasons. 
Oregon State gave them trouble last season. The Beavs run the football really well, and they have to play Utah this season. And if Cam Rising's there, that game would also worry me just from a stylistic standpoint for, for the Huskies. So how are you feeling about the way that Washington right now is defending the run? And how do you look at those two matchups? So I'll say this. A, the tackling was better than it was last year. Yeah, no, no, no. It was de- it was definitely it's better. Yes. Yeah. Uh, no, yeah. I wasn't knocking anything you were saying. I just, the tackling is better than last year. So that's that's something that gives me a little bit of just like, oh, yeah, there's that. And then one big piece that did not play. Um, he, he played a couple of snaps against Oregon State last year and a couple against Oregon that is back and fully healthy this year and is playing out of his mind, especially against uh, against the Ducks, was Edifoni Lafoscio, the middle linebacker. He had 11 tackles on um, on Saturday and just looks the part, man. He looks really, really good and has cleaned up a lot of messes. And then now that Asa Turner is back and healthy, where he played uh, some snaps against Oregon as well, that allows Washington to bring their best tackler in the secondary, Dominique Hampton. Or, excuse me, he's one of their better tacklers. I, I love Mish Powell in the nickel, too. He did a really good job. He blew up Jordan James on that, that one play, too. Um, yeah, he beat yeah he beat Stephen Jones, who has been a really really good interior lineman for yeah. Oregon this season. He beat him. You're talking about the defensive tackle, right? No, I'm talking about the the nickel corner, who uh, on the on the play on the on the swing pass out to the sideline. Oh oh oh, oh they hit oh they hit earlier in the game. Yeah, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. I thought you were talking about the late game stop. No, yeah, I was, I was talking about that. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, I so, got you. And he's a really good tackler too. So having those two guys with with the ability to play them a little bit closer to the line of scrimmage. Uh, and just kind of commit those extra bodies to run support when you might just not necessarily be worried um, about being beaten deep by, you know, say Utah or an Oregon state, even though I know DJ has a cannon, it's you know not, not necessarily a, um, the most accurate cannon. We'll say. Yeah. It's not a consistent cannon. Yeah. So it's having Asa Turner back and Vince Nunley, who's really emerged in the secondary is really good. Um, just pass coverage defender. Uh, gives the Huskies a little bit more freedom to just kind of play extra bodies up close to the line of scrimmage. Okay, okay, I got you. I I think that's just kind of the biggest thing to look at with Washington. No, you're right. When I watched them play on Saturday, that was the only thing they didn't have. They ran the football well against a good defense in Oregon. We know they can throw the football. They did that well. And, it, you know, Oregon's pass defense much improved from a year ago because guys weren't running, uh, as, as Jeffrey Boss of the linebacker said, they weren't running butt naked open. And I was like, well, he's, he's right. I haven't yeah. necessarily heard that verbiage before, but hey, you know, whatever floats. <laughs> That's a new one for me. Yeah, what, whatever, whatever floats your boat. He's right, though. But the oh, thing is, sure. it doesn't matter because the Washington receivers, you got three NFL guys there and they're making contested catches, you know, all over the place. Like, look at the go-ahead touchdown. TriQuest Bridges is in, like, perfect position. Rome but guess what? That guy. Yeah, Roma Dunze is that guy. And Michael Penix has a ridiculously accurate deep ball or as i texted my uh my brother and friend during the game i was like his deep ball is annoyingly perfect because so, it is perfect like every single time it is right on a guy's hands or or right where it needs to be so when i look at washington i see Penix is protected they can run the football uh when they need to i like dylan johnson all this season the receiving core is great they use their tight ends defensively i like their front four i think olafoscio is good and you know the rest of the defense is is good enough but I mean, there just aren't like, that's the only real question is, yep. do you run into a team that goes, you know, like Oregon in Seattle ran for over 200 yards. I could see Oregon State going for 250. I could yep. see Utah going for 250 if Cam Rising is there and they have actual balance. But I mean, those are first world problems when everything else is so good for Washington right now. Absolutely. And I, I do have to tell you one thing about Michael Penix that just kind of makes him even more more lovable. Um, somebody, I, a friend of mine on Twitter pointed out on the broadcast that uh, with about three minutes left in the fourth quarter, they showed a side-by-side of him and Bo Nix while Bo Nix was on the field. And it looked like Michael Penix, uh, and Jalen McMillan confirmed this on Twitter, that Michael Penix was freestyle rapping about making the comeback right before he went out and and uh, and led the game winning drive. No, that doesn't surprise me because I saw him at one point when Oregon was trying to go and ice the drive. Yeah. Or ice the game. And he was like he was smiling. Yep. And I was like, man, I know I know he's a competitor. I know he's, you know, literally and metaphorically, of course, got that dog in him, but like I don't know if I'd ever be smiling in that spot because the game at that point was out of his hands. Like Oregon, they went for it on fourth down because they're like, we don't want number nine to come back onto the field, which you know he showed when he uh, scored in two in in two plays but 
I did not I did not know that he was that he was freestyle rapping. That's some Dame Dollar vibes right there. I can I I can get behind that because I'm a huge Damian Lillard fan as a Portland native and um hmm, we miss you. My, we my miss heart you all. goes out to you. Yeah, I know. We miss Thanks you all. Drew Holiday. We, we miss you already, Dame. Um, yes, you're very welcome as a uh, Celtics fan for Drew Holiday. I love that fit. The Celtics are Celtics awesome. are pretty pretty nice. You know what else is nice? Pac-12 power rankings and Prize Picks, of course, because Prize Picks is the largest independently owned daily fantasy sports platform in North America. That's the continent that we live in. Just to be clear, we're the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports it's just you against the numbers that's it you don't have to battle thousands of other players pros sharks you pick more or less than on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in quick withdrawals easy gameplay and an enormous selection of players and stat types are what make prize picks the number one daily fantasy sports app i didn't see michael Penix's total before the oregon game roman i assume he probably went under he was barely over 300 yards in that so if you hit the under on michael Penix, congratulations i don't know why you would ever bet the under with michael Penix passing but hey prize picks has got you covered for anything that you want go to prizepicks.com slash locked on college use code locked on college for a first deposit match up to one hundred dollars prizepicks.com slash locked on college use code locked on college for a first deposit match up to one hundred dollars let's do some pac-12 power rankings roman and i did this a few weeks ago and um got a little bit of pushback for having usc third which was indeed ridiculous because we had them far too high so yes we uh, did we had them we had them far too high so uh let's go through here roman and we are assessing uh, individually our power rankings on the schedule you have compiled, what we feel your ceiling is, and also, you know, not full-on JP poll of, like, who'd be favored uh, on, on a neutral field, but, like, results are considered, though they are not everything, as you will see. Um, my top two after Saturday have not changed. It is Washington one. It is Oregon number two. Do you have anything different? I have nothing different there. Okay. Actually, wait, no, I have Stanford. No, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, we'll get to Stanford. Stanford is not on the bottom for the first time uh, this season. Respect. At number three, I have the team that we led this show with today, and that is Oregon State, who have now picked up a couple of really nice wins, including against, you know, a Utah team with backup quarterbacks is a good team, not a great team. UCLA is a good team, not a great team. So I watched them flex their offense against Cal on the road, have a bad day against Washington State, and do nothing but just play good football week in and week out. I mean, the offense is there. The defense, when they're at home at least, I need to see the defense play well on the road. They have a bye before they play Arizona this week. Good test for the Beavs because we, we know what Noah Fafita is doing, but I got Oregon State at number three. I agree. I, there's there's no complaints for me there. This, As you said, it's a really solid team, and I just I really do love watching them every single week. They're just a solid football team and just playing really well right now as well. And they are a tough, tough team to beat at home. That 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 game, Washington, Oregon State later this year, boy, that could have a lot on the line and some uh, pretty massive implications. So we both have them there at number three. And look, I, I know I want Cam Rising back for them to be at full strength, but I've got Utah at number four because they just keep winning football games. That's what they do, uh, man. Th their defense is still really good. <laughs> And if Cam, by the way, if Cam Rising comes back, Utah could be as high as number two on on, on, on this list. I would probably, oh, I would probably put them third. But I see a world if Oregon, you know, st takes a step back a little bit. I could see a world in which you know Utah could beat them at home if Cam Rising is there. I see a world in which Utah is is number two or three on this list. And so as it sits right now, I have them number four because they've been really impressive with the personnel shortages that they've had so far. Absolutely. There, I, I know there's somebody who we talked about earlier in the show, which is why I didn't really spend a ton of time on Oregon State either. But yeah, it's just one of those teams where you, they, they deserve to be here, right? And we're I know we're going to get there and I'm really excited, but they, they deserve to be there and they haven't done anything to prove that they deserve to be any lower than this. You're right. They could they could beat Oregon. They could beat Washington. They are just, again, with Cam Rising. That's, that's the one big if. But I don't have any other questions about this team. No, I, I, I really don't either. The defense is just every bit as good as we we thought it was coming into the season. And and frankly, I mean, Jonah Ellis is a beast. I, I, I just, I look at them and say, man, 
it's just a good football team across the board. Okay, here's where it starts to get kind of interesting. Because USC just got housed by a good, yeah. not great Notre Dame team. It's, it's a good Notre Dame team. It is not a great Notre Dame team. They got worked. And look, the defense wasn't even the problem. It, it, it was that Caleb Williams had the game he played against Oregon State a season ago. And this time, they didn't have Chance Nolan giving them four interceptions on the other side of things. So as a result, Notre Dame played a good football game. So I have USC at five and Arizona at six. And I'm, I'm okay. going to be honest, Roman, this is not a troll take. I thought about putting Arizona above USC because I watched the Wildcats walk into the LA Coliseum and take them to double overtime. They could have gone for two in the win, and then Washington State it w was, was playing some good football, looked like a good team. They've taken a step back because Arizona went in and waxed them 44-6. Yep. to six. I mean, Arizona has been impressive, and I was high on them coming into the year. I had them 7-5 and five is my preseason record prediction. Boy, kind of feels like they could do even more than that. So, you're you're. I, I think you're going to enjoy what I have to say here. Okay. I have UCLA five, USC six, oh, oh. and Arizona seven. Hold on. Okay. I do have a lot of questions about this UCLA team, but what they're doing defensively, I think for the most part, has been really, really impressive. And they're still. I I just there are a lot of questions on the offensive side. That I, 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 so I understand what you're saying. And I, I understand the, the, I, I, you know, I was, I was really looking for a, a Lee Corso, just not so fast. <laughs> that would be really great. But is yeah. it, is it a troll take? Sure. Maybe a little, because I just, I want to be that guy. But for the most part, I think that what UCLA's defense has done, and especially, and it all starts to lay a two law too, because, and you know, all, all, all the Washington people miss him dearly. Yeah, dude, that, that guy, that guy He's, is really that guy's really good. He he is at the point where he's just a game wrecker, and yes. I he de he deserves. I I think he I, why the Roman. I think he is the most impactful and dominant defensive end in this conference since Kayvon Thibodeau. Yes, I I think he's even better than Kayvon Thibodeau. Honestly, I don't I really know if do. I would go better than. I think that Thibodeau's ceiling is a bit higher because he's a little bit bigger, and I think he's got the bull rush, but. Latu's footwork, handwork, and and just football IQ is is ridiculously high. Okay. Kind of like how you have UCLA, I think ridiculously high. I I I think <laughs> I, I'm not gonna argue that. I I think highly of of Dante Moore. I do, but not right now. And he is right. throwing interceptions every week. He's thrown a pick six in three consecutive weeks. That that yeah. is. A problem. It was my concern with UCLA coming into the year, and I think it is a concern for them now. And so I have USC at five only because of Caleb Williams, and I know he had a bad game, but he's not going to play like that every week. I have Arizona six, UCLA seven, and so, Washington State at eight. Okay, yeah. So the, the rest we we agree for the most part with the rest there. Okay, where it's just it's there's just a little bit of slight difference where I also have Wazoo at eight. Okay. But again, I, I want to just one more thing on UCLA before I kind of move on to USC. And this is, this is probably where I think we saw what Notre Dame's defense did against Caleb Williams, where I I'm really impressed with what Notre Dame's done this year. The Louisville loss wasn't great, but the way they played with against Ohio state, especially was, I, I, I think that team can really play. And I think that UCLA's defense can do a lot of those same things. And it starts to lie into a lot too. And Alex Grinch's defense, just as long as he exists, as long as he is on that staff, I really can't give them any extra credit. You, and you, you know, the way that I've been thinking about it is what has Alex Grinch done to earn anyone's respect or trust that he is going to have his team ready to go defensively? There you go. That's like, like, like is, is there a game? Is there a moment? Nope. I, I like I have I nope. have not seen it. I do know that USC's offense is not going to vomit all over itself every single week. Like that's not <laughs> that's, going no, to happen. No, you're right. But you're but right. that's why the Trojans, by the way, who have a Pac-12 championship ceiling, have a lower floor than other teams in the league because it's 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 the same problem that Washington State has. If your quarterback 
isn't at the top of his game. And when he is, man, he's an NFL guy and he's awesome. Caleb Williams yes. more so than Ward, but Ward could play in the NFL. Absolutely. But if your quarterback who your offense is running through isn't having a great game, you're basically not going to win. Right. And that's that. And that, that's the thing. That's why I wanted to put somebody above USC. That's and, and UCLA just kind of being the other ranked team, being who they are. That's kind of why they got that spot for me where there's, there's just a whole lot to talk about with USC because Caleb Williams, Caleb Williams. But outside of that, the defense is just such a huge question mark. I can't mm-hmm. like, especially when you, you look up at, at, you look at the Arizona game there, we, we, we were accused of holding USC to a higher standard. Oh yes. And then we yes. See we that were happen. outlandish, ridiculous, <laughs> absurd haters. We are homers. That's all yes. we are. We are total homers. And that's yes. it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but, yeah. Look at us, big homers. Hey, I, I, that's that. That's that's all I have to say on the matter. As long as Alex Grinch is running this team and Caleb Williams, who looks mortal at times, and oh, by the way, Utah has beaten him how many times? Oh yeah, every time. That was me miming two and oh, but again, Cam Rising's got to be there, or else USC yeah. USC will be my favorite bet of the week. Uh, in in the Pac-12 prime picks. Uh, Let's round out our power rankings to wrap up today's show. We both have Washington State at eight. I have UCLA seven. Roman's got them five, uh, followed by USC and then Arizona. I have uh, USC five, Arizona six, UCLA seven, Wazoo eight. And then at the bottom, I look, I mean, it's, it's interesting to say the least, but I go Cal, then Stanford, then Colorado, then Arizona State. I like that. I was gonna go Cal, I just wanted to give some respect to, yeah, I, I was going to go Cal. Oh man, let's go. Yeah. I, I, I like that. I'm going to go with that order. I was, I was kind of playing with that in my head there for a little bit. Mm-hmm. I think that's go. Okay. Yeah. Cal, Cal Stanford, uh, who just picked up that big win against Colorado and then Arizona state. So I am, uh, I am, I am happy for Stanford that they didn't have to endure a one win season. And there is, there's plenty of optimism in the building. Not, not just that Stanford can be okay long term with Troy Taylor there. He showed that he can coach. Got to get some players in there, but you know it's um, just just not where they want want to be right now. But I think the other thing they showed is that just in the context of this season, you you could see Stanford like Stanford could beat Cal. I I was yep. dead set before the year. Ah, no, Cal's a much better team. Cal is a better team. I think they have a more talented roster, but the gap is clearly less than I previously thought. And I, I could see Stanford beating Cal, and I think that's the optimism for the Cardinal fans. So my power rankings, Washington, Oregon, Oregon State, Utah, USC, Arizona, UCLA, Washington State, Cal, Stanford, Colorado, ASU. Roman goes Washington, Oregon, Oregon State, Utah, UCLA, USC, Arizona, Wazoo, Cal, Stanford, Colorado, and Arizona State. Nice, clean bow on it. Roman Tomashoff, Locked On Huskies, Fan Nation, at Sports Illustrated covering the dogs, the current Pac-12 favorites. Roman, thanks as always. Spencer, thanks for having me. Appreciate everyone listening. I'll see you next time. And until then, hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.